Hey guys, just finished watching Gotham, uh, Season 4, Episode 16, A Dark Knight, One of the Three Soups. Um, this episode was interesting, there's a few little things going on with this episode, but uh, on, on the on the whole, this episode was a really good episode. I guess I give this episode pretty much uh, an 8 out of 10, it was a really good episode, it was really fun going on, there was a lot of things cool, and it was really cool seeing a lot of um, original characters. There were some times where there was a few scenes with like Jerome, um, Bruce, and uh, Selina, and it was really cool because the two of them, uh, Selina and, uh, and Joker, actually first appeared both in the same issue, they first appeared both in... Um, in 1994, 1939's um, Batman Number no. One from the from the 1940s. So it really is pretty cool to seeing that. It really was cool scenes with those things. Um, so let's start into it. The first thing we get is Matt Hatter getting out of prison. Uh, he's hypnotizing some people and stuff with the, some guards. And then he gets uh, Scarecrow out of prison. Then we also find out that they're working uh, with Jerome or for Jerome type thing. Uh, it's unclear kind of how they're doing it. It seems like a three-way partnership so far, but uh, it seems like, you know, obviously Jerome's a little bit more the, the headmaster of the whole thing, a little bit more in charge. Uh, we find out that um, 87 inmates uh, of Fargo Asylum escaped during that stuff from uh, Harvey Bullock, um, but by the end of it, he and they end up putting away 40 of them, so they're half away already. Uh, and then we get Mad Hatter ends up killing uh, that couple, you know, in front of Jim Gordon and... Um, and Harvey Bullock and stuff just by dropping the 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 big ball on them. That was a, what a, what a scene. It wasn't. It was cool the way they did it. They showed the whole thing. They didn't you know drop it and then just and then switch and you know you just see their shadows and blood splattering everywhere. I thought that's what we're we we're gonna get. You know it's gonna drop. We're gonna go. We're gonna see the shadow and the blood's gonna go away. So we get you know we just get the we we get it aside as if you know someone was filming and then turned their backs and just gets the. The splatter goes everywhere in the shadow, and we're going to get, you know, a shot of Bruce, uh, of Jim and Bullock with the shadows of those people and the ball, um, and then the blood splattering on them. But no, we got to see the whole thing, and I think that was just perfect. I love the way they did it, and it was great. It was, it was shocking, too, that they even showed it that way, instead of just kind of, like I said, cutting away from it. So it was great the way they do that, and I like the way they're not shying away from things like that. Um, and then we get Bruce and Selena bre breaking into GC the two Jim Gordon's office at GCPD. They're trying to get... Uh, um, we find out that from last week's episode when uh, Selena asked uh, Bruce to give the, uh, the 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 necklace and the jewels that she stole from the person that uh, from the family that um, Ivy killed their father, um, she actually had Bruce doing that because that was unclear in last week's episode whether or not Bruce would do it for her or if he made he wanted her to make amends and he forced her to do it. So it's here they they show us that um, he's done it and he wants <clears throat> another favor from her kind of uh so that she she kind of owes him uh you know he doesn't feel like it she's he's just trying to get her to break into there get the file so that he can go after jerome Velasca. so that was really cool with that and we get a cool scene with um with jerome and uh, uh cooper copper um the uh, detective uh, you know one of the other detectives at the gcpd and um <clears throat> it was really cool uh the way bruce was doing that he was playing with her type thing and kind of acting out and it really was an interesting idea to play with uh, i like when they're doing that practicing bruce is able to kind of portray stuff building up the whole things that he'll have to have for when he eventually becomes batman you know just kind of acting the whole uh you know playboy scenario and acting his way out of situations and being able to get out of any situation as bruce wayne i think that's really going to be cool to play with that and i like the way when he when he does that um, and then we get Bra uh, Barbara kind of his, her hand is still glowing. We find out a bit more about that. We find out that Rosal Ghoul had turned Barbara into the new head of the of the uh, the demon, and that she can command the, the League of the League of the League of Assassins, but the League of Shadows. So that's really going to be cool to see that and see how that kind of plays into um, this uh, this show. It's really going to be cool to see when that goes. And there's another point about it that kind of bugs me, but I'll get into that when we get to there. Um, we get Jim and Bullock find a bunch of people jumping off roofs. At first, it's just the one roof, and then we find out, no, it's almost every roof in Gotham. Everyone who's listening to the radio is going up there, and uh, Bullock decides to listen to the radio um, and ends up, you know, going up to the roof type thing. And so that's really cool with that. That was really fun playing with that. And, you know, Jim goes to the, finds, they find the radio station when Bullock kind of sacrifices himself or, you know, uh, risks himself to do it. Um then Jim goes to the radio station where he finds Tetch, and to try and get the information uh, from him, he shoots him in the hand. I love that how how, how Jim is not afraid to do it, to going too far. He's able to do that to do to do this stuff, and I think that's really cool uh, playing with that. I think it's really going to be fun um, 
to see how far Jim is willing to go for certain situations like this because this does call for it. This is the time where you know you have so many. Have, they never said how many people were standing on on the rooftops, but it looks like at least a couple hundred people were uh, around a hundred people were probably or you know dozens of, like you know, probably around a hundred people were probably standing on the rooftops um, ready to jump. So uh, you know they had to <clears throat> they had to work fast type of thing. So that was really cool with that. And then um, we find uh, Jim, uh, we find Jerome actually finds his uncle, and while he's at his uncle's place, uh, Bruce ends up showing up, and it was obvious that it, Bruce was going to show up with that, because he had already found, the got the file from GCPD, and knowing that he had a, an uncle type thing, and Bruce ends up saving Jerome multiple times, actually, you know, from, from his uncle, then later on, and at the end, from... Um, from Selena, who's about to shoot him and stuff. Uh, I think that was really cool playing with that. It's really fun the way they did that. It's really going to be cool to see that relationship kind of build up, um, especially when uh, Jim, uh, you know Jerome was about to save Bruce again from the the big uh, the strong man uh, from the circus. But then uh, he decided, no, I'm going to let this guy kill you because that'd be more ironic, it'd be funnier type thing. And I think that was really cool about that. And I liked the way they're playing with these relationships and stuff. Uh, and Jerome, you know, uh, Cameron Monaghan as uh, as Jer Jerome is perfect <clears throat> as the Joker. I can't wait to see more of them. And I love this whole relationship between uh, Jerome, uh, Matt Hyder, and uh, Dr. Crane. These two, one of the two greatest villains on Gotham, other than Penguin. Um, but Penguin is an interesting character, but at the same time, he's, you know, he's not really that, they don't, they have, with Penguin, they haven't turned him full comic book, you know, they haven't turned the dial to full comic book, um, to full, you know, uh, corny and full comic bookness, and I don't, and that's the one difference between Penguin and, and, uh, Jerome, Mad Hatter, and, um, uh, and, 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 and Dr. Crane there, the, <clears throat> What's his name? They're uh, Doctor Crane, yeah, the Scarecrow type thing. So I think that was that's the difference between the, the characters. Is yeah, you know, Penguin is one of the one of the great characters on this show, and he's a good character and all that. Um, but if you compare him to you know the way he is in the comic books and stuff, he he is very much like that. But he's not full comic book. Yes, you wouldn't if you watched scenes with him and you didn't know what this this was. You know, you could probably you wouldn't know. Uh, other than you know him calling himself the Penguin, uh, in the you know odd times he wears an umbrella type thing, you wouldn't really see him as a comic book character. Whereas you look at Jerome in, in this entire episode, and you can't not notice that he's the Joker. You know anyone who knows anything about Batman would see, oh, he must be the Joker type thing. Uh, you look at Scarecrow; he's clearly the Scarecrow. He is the Scarecrow. He has the whole setup. The, the Mad Hatter has the hat. You know uh, everyone, and he does all these comic book crazy things. Whereas. Um, whereas Nigma, not Nigma, but um, uh, Penguin is a bit more of a, uh, a bit more of a, of a gangster type thing, a bit more of a mobster, uh, and even I would say Riddler on some point. Riddler's a little bit on on the mix with that. I like when they playing with the two of them. Um, but really, I really like these characters, and I'm starting to like these characters just a little bit more of Penguin and stuff. And I don't want Penguin or the Riddler to go away, but I wouldn't mind to see. I would love to see Jerome, uh, you know, Mad Hatter. And um, and uh, Scarecrow becoming more of a season regular, and I think add them to the different characters. You know, at the first season we had all kinds of different people. We had the Falcons or Moroni. We had all kinds of different um, heads of people, and now we kind of have um, we have Leslie Tompkins, and you know we have uh, Barbara, we have Penguin, we have Jim. Uh, not that many people. It would be cool to also add, you know, Jerome and his gang, his gang of criminals. I think that'd be really cool to play with that. I hate having them around is really fun when they're on screen. Um, so yeah, Bruce saves ends up saving uh, Jerome from all that. Then we get Drew, uh, Jim ends up telling everyone over the radio to save each other, uh, and that ends up working. And then at the end we get, um, or it was, maybe it was before that, but we get the uh, when um, <clears throat> Barbara's trying to run rule the League of Assassins, and you know one of them she kills the leader or the so-called leader, um, the commander type thing, and uh, then everyone else turns against her or looks like they're about to turn against her, and then when she jumps at them, she kind of steps towards them, they kind of recoil back, and they're all scared, and she realizes that you know she's there to 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 rule over them because they're all uh, pathetic and that's when the women of the of the league kind of kill all the men and that was an interesting idea and i get the way they're doing that and you know they're tr i get the whole you know uh thing trying to have more women and stuff and ha give her the whole team of just women but there was like 20 people in that entire room 20, like even more than that 
and there's only five females in that, that 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 bugged me the whole point is because it looks like they're clearly trying to save their budget by not having 20 members of the League of Assassins by just having five five people now. So now it's just going to be there's seven people with Barbara and uh, and um, Tabitha. So I just it just seemed kind of like like a, like they're trying to uh, an obvious uh, tactic just to save money by not having 20 people. To, to pay 20 actors to pay it would be I thought I think it would have been better is if they had killed all the men but it would have been half men half women and they and we could be left with 10 women you know so Barbara has an army of 10 women uh, League of Assassin members to command now hopefully next episode Barbara will go out and she'll tell them to go get some more blood we need some fresh blood uh, you know there's a lot of kids in the street who I'm sure would would be able to they'd be able to pick up from the street and and turn them into League of Assassins members and train them over and over again uh, and I think that would be a cool thing to, to play with, and I think it would be interesting to see, um, you know, an army of, uh, of League of Assassins members, all women, but I just don't want them to just be five of them, you know, and now when Barbara says it themselves, they kind of like talk about how, wow, we're not much of a league now, uh, but it, hopefully she does something about that, you know, don't just use that line just to say, yeah, 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 we realize that we're now just five, got, we're now just five things, and I'm trying to kind of point out the obvious that, They've killed off all those other, all the League of Assassins members just so that it could be cheaper for them on the show. And, you know, they try and write that, make, Barbara makes that comment in order to point that out. To say, yeah, 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 we're aware of that, but they better were fix that in, in when they go into next week's episode. So uh, hopefully that they can write something like that. Um, and somehow we can get a, an actual league. If you look at it over on Arrow, they never really have like 40 or 50 people, League of Assassins member, all in one room at, at the same time. You know, they never really do that, but they never, the the implication is that there always, always are a bunch of people. So hopefully we can do that. We'd like to see a scene maybe with uh, making it obviously really different than on Arrow and stuff. And I think that's another reason why they're probably doing it here is obviously in the Arrow it's League of Assassins and on here it's a League of um, Shadows. Uh, but it's really going to be cool to see where things go with this. And hopefully they can have, you know, have, they need at least more than five five girls type thing. I mean, it's just not, um, it, it's not, it's not anything against, you know, them being women or anything like that. But it's just kind of, the League of Assassins is supposed to be a league. And like Barbara says, it's, they're not a league, it's just a couple of people type thing. It seems like Barbara has more thugs just on her own payroll before the League of Assassins. The whole point of them, her now using, wanting and needing the League of Assassins is because it would be an army of people, a small army of uh, of, of, of people, you know, enough to make a league, like a small, uh, you know, like 10 to 20 people minimum. So I think it would make uh, way more sense to see that. And then having just five of them, you know, even if they're real good, they're League of, they're league of Assassins, league, league of Shadows level good assassins, um, they still need to be a little bit more. So I need to, hopefully they can get more of them um, because at this point it just seems like why would she need these five when she can just hire, you know, Barbara could probably afford to just hire 10 street thugs type thing. So hopefully they can do something with that and maybe, you know, bring in some more and start hiring a lot more. Um, I think it would be quite cool to see where things are going to go with this. But the idea of only having five is kind of, it just seems like a cheap ta ta tactic to kind of, uh, to to kind of save some money on the show and that kind of bothers me when it when it's kind of obvious and, and like that it kind of looks like a sore sticks out like a sore thumb to me it's like oh clearly they're doing that to save money because they don't want to pay 20 actors even though you know they don't have to be main characters none of them need to say anything you just need to have them on there i mean you know put the stunt doubles i mean on arrow they put them in the full league of assassins costume so that the stunt doubles or anyone could just throw could put on the costume and be an extra person you know they can get a, an assistant on on set who's you know the director Director's assistant or the some random person um, to just throw a costume on and just stand in there just for the scenes when everyone's there. So I think that would be a way to do something with here. Um, you know, have some of them be random people from the set. I mean, you know, it could be anyone. You don't have to actually have lines. You don't have to be characters or anything things like that. But just would like to see Barbara having you know an army of at least ten. Uh, 10 females to work with as, as a League of Assassins. So I think it's really going to be a cool idea to see this, and I like the idea of a all female version of the League of Assassins. Definitely it's going to be different than the way they did it on Arrow, League of Assassins, League of Shadows. I think it's going to be interesting to see that. But like I said, they need to be a lot more than five. So let me know what you think, guys, about this in the comments below. What do you think things are going with this? How do you think things are going out? And one of the things that we didn't get, um, we haven't seen anything of uh, Oswald Cobblepot in this episode of Penguin or Riddler or Leslie Tompkins. So it would be cool to see them interact uh, maybe next week's episode with Jerome still out. And hopefully Jerome can stay out of prison and he can become a new member 
of the uh, different uh, different kind of groups and underground criminal organizations uh, type thing, and I think that could be quite fun to play with. It could be cool to have him being a more recurring character. So I know he's still busy, the actor, with his other show, Shameless, um, which hopefully he can, you know, that show can end soon. If I'm not mistaken, it's on like season nine. So if that end, that show ends anytime soon, it would be cool to see him jump over here and become a permanent character on here. So it would be cool to see this. I'm really excited to see where things are going with next week's episode. And I like having uh, different uh, comic book accurate characters. And I feel like these characters are more comic book accurate and they feel more comic booky than they did than than the Riddler and the. Um, and uh, or more more complicated than, than Penguin does, so I think it's really cool with that, and I like that. I definitely can't wait to see uh, where things go with this, and I think it looks fun with that, and with all those set photos of Drome and that new hat type thing, that Jack Jack um, Jack Nicholson style uh, hat looks pretty cool. So hopefully that could be somewhere that could be coming up in next week's episode. So all in all, this episode looks good. It was fun. Uh, just bothered me with that whole uh, League of Assassins thing, but other than that, it was a great episode. Like I said, eight out of ten. So let me know you think guys about this in the comments below, season 4, episode 16, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. I'm Captain America, here to talk to you about one of the most valuable traits a soldier or student can have. Subscribing. Sometimes subscribing. This is the key to victory. Sometimes it leads to very little, and it seems like it's not worth it. And you wonder why you waited so long for something so disappointing. How many more of these?